Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can protect yourself from a ransomware attack on your Synology NAS. Now this is the third video in a series I am doing on how you can secure your Synology NAS. The first video talked about user and group permissions. The second video discussed different DSM settings that you could implement. And then this video we're going to take a look at ransomware attacks. If you're interested in watching those first two videos, I have links for them in the description. But we're going to first define exactly what a ransomware attack is because the majority of people are scared of them. You hear it on the news, but you might not actually know what it is. And a ransomware attack, in summary, is generally something that will either delete the files that you have or encrypt them. And they're generally accompanied by things like a text document that will basically tell you that you can pay X amount of dollars to this address and if you do, they will send you that encryption key so that you can get your files back. Now, this is a major problem and it will continue to be a major problem since everything for the most part revolves around tech and data. So while enterprises are targeted, home users can be targeted as well. So you have to look at how you can protect yourself in the event that this was to happen. So in this video, the first thing that we're gonna do is look at how you can protect yourself and then I'm gonna go through a demo and I'm gonna show you that in a worst case scenario, if you were impacted, but you did follow these two steps, how you can restore your files so that you don't have to either permanently lose them or pay the ransom and hope that they actually send you the information that they said they would. So the first tool that we're gonna take a look at is snapshot replication. And, and unfortunately for this tool, you have to be using the BTRFS file system. But snapshots freeze files in time. So what I mean by that is that you can set up a schedule and what we're gonna do is open up the snapshot replication tool. We're gonna to go to snapshots and I created a test folder here called snapshot testing. And what we can do is we can set up scheduled snapshots. Now, like I said, snapshots freeze a file at a point in time. So when you complete a snapshot, at a later time, if you were to restore back to this snapshot, the file would exist exactly as it does today. So it doesn't matter what happened to that file in the future. If the snapshot from today still exists, you can restore it back to that version of the file. So we're gonna take a look a little later at how you can restore some of those snapshots. But in order to set up the schedule, what you can do is select the folder and select settings. At this point, you're gonna enable the snapshot schedule and you can specify when you'd like to take these snapshots. So this is really gonna be dependent on how often the files change. If you're constantly changing the files, you probably wanna do it daily. However, if they're very infrequently changing, you might wanna do it weekly. It really depends. When you're done setting up the schedule, head over to the retention section and this is gonna be the total number of snapshots that you retain. So if you wanna keep all snapshots for 30 days, that would mean that you're able to go 30 days in the past and restore any of those snapshots. Now it's important to understand that you will be taking up storage space on your NAS, but it's not gonna be as much as you think it's gonna be. Meaning that it's not one-to-one -one if you're storing a gigabyte of data, it's not going to take a full gigabyte of storage for your second snapshot and a third for your third snapshot. It's going to be using just a little bit over a gigabyte because it's only taking into account the differences. So in summary, just make sure that you have a little extra space and if you do, you'll be totally fine utilizing snapshots. So now that we set up snapshots, we're gonna take a look at how you can back up your Synology NAS offsite. And for this, I'm just gonna be using Hyper Backup. What I did is I set up a Hyper Backup task to Google Drive just for this demonstration. I will be transparent that I personally use Backblaze B2. Um, I have a tutorial for that. I'll leave a pop-up for that now if you're interested in seeing how to do that. But the, the point here is that it doesn't matter what service you're backing up to. What matters is that you're backing up your NAS offsite in some capacity. Now, when you set up a hyper backup task, what you're gonna have to do is pick the shared folders that you want to automatically back up, any applications that you might wanna back up, when it should be backed up, and the retention policies, similar to the retention policies for snapshots. Now, the one thing I wanna point out is that snapshots are not backups. Keep that in mind. So yes, you can restore snapshots on your individual Synology NAS, but if anything was to happen to your Synology NAS outside of you know, a ransomware attack, snapshots will do you no good. So if your RAID array dies for whatever reason, you have two hard drives fail, you're using you know, RAID 5, two hard drives fail, you lose your entire RAID array, 
what good are snapshots going to do at that point? And the answer is nothing. So what you need is to use a combination of them. You need to use snapshots and you need to use hyper backup to back up your NAS offsite. And I say offsite because God forbid something happens to the location of the NAS, it will most likely impact whatever devices are at that location. So if you really care about your data, you want to back it up off-site. Now, I want to point out that you can use a combination of on-site and off-site backups. So for example, if you have data that you just want to ensure that it's backed up, but you don't really care if it was to actually get lost for whatever reason, you can back that up you know, on-site. But if you have data that is super important to you, that you would be really, really upset if you were to lose it, you need to back that data up offsite. So the best thing you can do is an analysis to determine which data is very important to you, which data you wanna back up offsite, and then you can determine what you wanna do with the rest of the data on your NAS. So now that we have our snapshots and our backups set up, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go through a quick demo. And what I did is I created a folder here called snapshot testing, and I have five text files in it. So to mimic a ransomware attack, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete them. Um, I'm not gonna go through and encrypt them because truthfully, it's probably not worth the time. But the way that you have to look at it is that if anyone can access the files on your Synology NAS, whether directly or indirectly, that could be through an SMB share, it could be through something like Synology Drive, it could be through File Station, you know, there's many different ways. The point here is that if the files get deleted or encrypted, you have to be able to restore them. So to test this, I'm gonna come through, I deleted everything here, and we're gonna restore the snapshot, and we're gonna go through after, delete them again, and we're gonna restore the files from Hyper Backup. So inside of Snapshot Replication, what you can do is select the shared folder, and then you could select Snapshot, and then Snapshot List. And what you're gonna see here is an entire list of all of your snapshots. At that point, if you wanna browse for individual files, what you can do is select browse. You'll be informed that in order to browse this snapshot, you'll need to enable the make snapshot visible option. So you can just select yes because you want to actually do this. Once that's done, you're gonna be brought to a folder and it's going to be the pound sign snapshot. And then what you'll have is you'll have that specific snapshot and all the files inside of that snapshot. So if you had to restore an individual file here, you can go through and you can download it or you can move it to wherever you have to. But the thing that I wanna point out here is that this is done on an individual file level. So let's assume in our case, like we did, that we actually lost all the files in it. And we wanna restore everything inside of that one shared folder to our Synology NAS. What we can do is go to the recovery tab and then inside of the shared folder, you can select it and then click recover. At that point, it's gonna bring up your snapshot list and you can restore an entire snapshot back to that shared folder. So when you select restore to this snapshot, what it's gonna do is it will overwrite everything that exists in that shared folder with the data that existed at this specific snapshot's time. So in summary, that's the long and short of how snapshot replication works. So moving on to hyper backup, what we can do is we can browse that hyper backup file as well. And what we have the option for is the Backup Explorer inside of Hyper Backup. And that will launch the actual backup that you took. And at the bottom, you're gonna see a sliding scale. Now, unfortunately for me, I only have one backup here. But you'll see a bunch of little dots. And what that will allow you to do is it will allow you to go back through the versions based on however many you're keeping on the retention policy. And you'll be able to either download the individual file or you can restore it. So you have both options. If you restore it, it will restore it back to the shared folder. If you download it, it will download it on whatever device you're using. But I want you to keep in mind that this is individual files only. Now, similar to snapshots, if you lose an entire folder, you can go and restore the data as well. So in the middle here, you're gonna see the restore option and then you're gonna see data. And when you select it, you're gonna see all of your backups here, and then you could select whatever backup that you wanna restore from. You can select next, and then you can go through these options. So this is just gonna ask you what exactly you wanna restore. If you backed up your system configurations, you can restore that, and at the next section, you're going to see the individual folder. So it's gonna tell you that the folder exists on your current environment already. So if you were to restore it, it would overwrite that file. In our case, the files are deleted. 
So we don't really mind that we're restoring it because everything's gone. Uh, but keep in mind that you're restoring every single file. So if you're only looking for an individual file, you really want to use the first option. So those are the two ways that you can use snapshot replication and hyper backup to either take a snapshot or a backup and then to restore your data. Now, the one thing that I want to point out here is in an event where DSM is compromised, meaning that somebody gets access to DSM and they go through and they delete all of the files on your NAS or they encrypt them, whatever it is, and then they go through your snapshots, they delete all of those, they go through hyper backup, they delete the task. You know, we're talking a real targeted attack by somebody that knows what they're doing. The key there is to have a retention policy on the actual destination where you're backing up to inside of Hyper Backup. So if you're using Google Drive or if you're using Backblaze like I am, what you want to do is you want to set up a version history on that side as well. And what that will allow you to do is that if they delete the task inside of here and they delete that backup, you'll be able to go through on that side, on the web side, and restore that. The same will be true if you're using a you know, on-site or off-site uh, Synology NAS. You'll have to set up snapshots on that. I unfortunately can't go through every single option because there are so many. The key though is that you wanna ensure that you kind of have a contingency plan in the event of a direct attack on your Synology NAS inside of DSM so that you can restore some of that data. So this was a pretty long tutorial. Uh, I'm hoping that it helped you guys understand these two applications a little bit better. But in next week's video, we're gonna take a look at how you can securely access your Synology NAS from outside of your local network. So please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. If the video helped you out, give it a thumbs up and thanks a lot for watching.